Thank you for the valued testimony of each of you. Uh, I think in short, uh, any preference or credit or tax break that's worth having that really serves the public interest is worth putting in the permanent tax code and worth paying for. I want to salute each of you for your leadership and testimony today, but I particularly want to uh, focus on Ms. McGinnis and the Committee for Responsible Federal Budget. Because when the Republican deficit hawks flew south for the winter, uh, when they engaged in what I think is total hypocrisy by adding trillions more to our national debt, you continued to advance staunch, principled advocacy for fiscal responsibility. You conveyed the facts, not just the myths, about the true cost of this Republican Trump tax monstrosity. As you say in your written testimony, this tax law, quote, made an already bad fiscal situation stunningly worse. And so now we reach today, and in addition to coming here to testify this morning, Chairman Brady apparently also announced that he and President Trump will soon attempt to force through another four to five hundred billion dollars of unpaid tax elixir that will make the situation even worse. We know that for years, large multinationals with armies of tax lawyers, lobbyists, and political action committees have exploited loopholes to strip profits out of America and have them magically reappear in some island tax haven. We've had estimates of offshoring uh, and tax dodging costing as much as $100 billion every year. The joint uh, tax staff uh, demonstrated that the Republican tax bill had no effect on this. Not only did it not raise any revenue by closing these loopholes, the Republican bill actually expanded the loopholes and added another $14 billion in lost revenue from these international loopholes. Mr. Phillips, I would ask you whether or not it's correct that the Trump Republican tax bill, by establishing a tax rate for international investments made in other countries, that is seldom more than half the rate that's charged for investments here in America and often may be zero. Uh, and the second provision that establishes uh, an arbitrary 10 percent tax exempt rate on overseas tangible investments, whether all of that doesn't significantly increase the incentives for offshoring both profits and American jobs. Yes, absolutely. On the one hand, it, it incentivizes moving profits offshore because the lower rate means that companies, if they can shift their profits over there, can, can pay the lower rate. And then also, I think more disturbingly, is that it actually creates an incentive to move more jobs offshore because if you actually move those tangible assets offshore and actually make a new factory offshore, then you can actually get a tax break for that. And Ms. McGinnis, you wanted to add a word uh, in response to the last uh, comments that were made? Thank you, Ryan. Um, I thought in many ways we had picked the winners and losers when we decided what we were going to do in the tax bill. And we yes. created sort of winners for everybody, and I suppose the losers was the national debt and the future and economic growth. But we made those decisions in the PATH Act. We made those decisions in tax reform. So I was going to take issue with it now is when we're making those decisions. But I would say I, I have no judgment that I'm sharing at the moment on each individual tax extender. Um, some make more sense than others. But the ones that you decide you want to keep by all means, if you pay for them. But the whole point is when your debt is where it is right now, um, growing faster than the economy, we can't continue to do things that we put on the national credit card. Well, thank you. We're going to take.